Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about RV Hotskin. If you have not already, click that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and go ahead and like this video because it really helps us get noticed and helps us, uh, you know, keep making content just like this. We'll go ahead and jump in and get started on this video. We're going away, get your back, check the tag, decision is So to start off, we'll just kind of introduce what RV hot skin is. So basically when we're referring to RV hot skin, it's referring to the metal components in your RV that can, that can become electrified when there's a fault in your RV's electrical system or in the park uh, electrical pedestal that you're plugged into. It's basically just stray voltage. It can happen for a number of reasons. It can be caused by something you've done to cause stray voltage in your RV, or it can be something that is wrong with the pedestal that you're actually plugged into. Something as simple as putting a nail in a wall and hitting a wire, or some water getting into a pedestal that was wired correctly, or a pedestal that's not wired correctly. There's a long list of reasons of how RV hot skin can be caused, but essentially what you need to know is it's voltage occurring in your RV where it should not be. So straight voltage in your RV can be dangerous because your RV is actually not grounded. You're on four or six or eight or however many rubber tires. So the, the electricity is not gonna go to ground, which is where it intends to go naturally. And it's not going back to the power source because you have an issue with your wiring. So basically it's just sitting on your RV, keeping it electrified. So you might be thinking, maybe if I just put my jacks down, those are metal, they're touching the ground. Now my RV's grounded, the voltage is going back to ground. I should be good, right? Wrong, electricity naturally wants to go to ground and whether that's your RV or if it's you, you need to make sure that you're, you are not experiencing any level of stray electricity in your RV because it could be the matter of life and death. Basically, RV jacks are not properly grounded. When you're talking about properly grounding electricity, you're talking about drilling poles deep into the ground. and Like 30 just, or 40 feet. I yeah, think. and when your jack is just sitting on top of the ground, it's not necessarily gonna be the easiest path for the electricity to go to get to ground. So as soon as you touch that RV, and God forbid it's raining or something like that outside, and you become a great conductor, it's gonna go through you, and that's not what you want. Especially if you have small animals or children, that can be super, super dangerous. Obviously, it can be dangerous for adults too, but you know, obviously if you have little ones, that's even more of a concern. So our RV hotskin story begins way back in Idaho when we got our transmission replaced. We were parked right next to their building and they were nice enough to go ahead and wire us a 30 amp outlet so that we could remain comfortable during our stay there, which we were there for almost like two weeks. So basically one night I went out to one of the bays in the RV, it had been raining and the ground was damp. I was wearing flip flops. There was a muddy puddle by the bay that I was trying to get into. Now, paint on your RV can act as an insulator, so there's a lot of times that you might touch certain parts of your RV covered in paint, even if it's metal, that you might not feel a shock or anything because it's being insulated by the paint. So I went over and I went to open the bay door. Well, the side of the bay door does not have paint on it right there. So I got a shock. I was standing in a puddle. I didn't know what exactly had happened. I thought maybe one of my tendons had just like popped or something. I don't know if you've ever had that feeling. Adam came out and thought I was crazy and he's touching the RV and nothing's happening to him. He well, was touching it in all kinds of different places, including where she was touching it. We didn't realize this. He wasn't standing in water, I was. So eventually he like moved and adjusted to the point where he was standing in the water and he finally got a shock and he was like, I don't know what's going on. So we made the decision to unplug the RV and do a little bit of research to find out what was happening. So obviously when you find out that your RV is shocking you, that's pretty shocking. <laughs> All jokes aside, it is a serious thing. And so we did a lot of research to figure out what was wrong with our RV. We were thinking the worst. We were thinking our RV was 
wired wrong. We were going to have to call an electrician on top of getting our transmission replaced. Like it was just not going to be a fun situation. So one of the things that we looked into that we could get is a non-contact voltage tester. Um, this is basically a really inexpensive thing that you can get at any hardware store pretty much and it's going to test for voltage. Um, the only thing that I will say is there's issues with it if you're trying to test something like inside of your RV you're not really grounded so it might not get a good accurate reading so there are voltage meters that you can actually like hook up to a ground and they might be a little more accurate if you're if you have discovered that you have stray voltage in your RV and it's not necessarily like the parks issue um, I would recommend getting something like that because then you're really gonna have to test uh, specific areas um, really unless you're an electrician once you figure out that you have stray voltage I would recommend to get an electrician um, before yes. you just start trying to digging, dig into your wires and stuff. Always recommend having electricians do electrical work because it can get out of hand in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So that's where this story all gets kicked off is the fault for the wiring problem came because the transmission repair shop decided to install the outlet themselves. And while they may have electrical knowledge, there's a lot of safeguards that electricians have in place to where they're not making mistakes and they're double checking and triple checking themselves. So basically, we went and got an NCVT. We realized that we were getting stray voltage, not just in the RV, but other parts of the transmission park were electrified. Like we were parked next to a big middle pole on a sign that wasn't touching us, wasn't touching the pedestal, and that was electrified as well. So we were kind of like a little concerned what was going on. We at one point thought it was the power lines maybe causing some electricity because we've heard of that actually happening. If you're parked directly by power lines, that's something to look into as well. But basically, it actually ended up being our surge protector, which you should always have a surge protector if you didn't already know. Uh, when you're plugging into new pedestals, it can really protect you and your RV. Um, basically found out that we had a reverse polarity situation. So reverse polarity refers to your wiring being done backwards. So you've got your positive to your negative and your negative to your positive. And while your electrical systems will still run most of the time, depending on the amount of the electricity, it can be really bad for your electrical systems in the fact that it's electrifying your circuit boards and everything that's not, every metal component of your RV that's not supposed to be electrifying. So basically we alerted the transmission repair shop. They looked into it. We felt a little bit uncomfortable uh, plugging back into that pedestal after the incident occurred. For the record, I don't want to say anything bad about this repair shop. They were extremely helpful. They were trying to help us out in a tough situation. They didn't even need to try to do that wiring of the pedestal for us. Um, they basically did it so that we could have 30 amp power. So it was a kindness that they did to us. Um, it just ended up not working out. And what we ended up doing was just plugging into 15 amp power on their building that was already properly wired. And we just did that for the remainder of our stay and it worked out just fine. So after we alerted them to the outlet problem, when they opened it up, what they found was that it was not reverse polarity actually, which is interesting because that's what our surge protector was reading as. But it was actually that the hot wire was cut with too much slack. So it was all kind of coiled up inside of the electrical receptacle and the outside casing of it is metal. So while the wire is insulated and it's got that cover on it, it was kind of like coiled up against it and it was then kind of melting away that insulation until eventually the insulation completely melted away and just completely electrified everything around it. While that's being said, I think the point, large point I'm trying to make is they technically wired it correctly. There's just these little things that you wouldn't necessarily think about and that's kind of the point of why we're recommending to get an electrician if you're having an issue that you need to troubleshoot uh, beyond just, you know, plugging into a separate pedestal because your RV is fine or something like that. Um, because even if you have a general know-how of how things work, there's little things like that that you might not think of that can still cause major issues. All that to say, here are our top three recommendations of just inexpensive things that you can buy right now to help protect yourself against RV hot skin. So the number one thing to have on your list of things to protect against RV hot skin is definitely the non-contact voltage tester. You should be 
keeping this thing in your pocket wherever you go, honestly. Every time you plug into a new outlet, you should be testing that outlet. Every time after you plug into that outlet, you should be testing your RV. You should be running around with this thing, poking anything that's metal, basically, so that <laughs> you don't get shocked and you don't put yourself or your family at risk of being harmed by electricity because it's very, very dangerous. As a side note, when you're testing things with your non-contact voltage tester, it's important that you're only getting a voltage reading from the hot port and not the neutral or the ground, because then you've got other problems at hand. Make sure that when you're testing things with your NCVT that you are just testing everything. Don't be choosy, just put it up to any exposed metal that you see, test your outlets, uh, test literally anything that you can think of. Number two would be the surge protector. Now, really, this is super important for other reasons than just RV hot skin. It's really protective of your RV in case there's a power outage or something like that. Um, definitely should just have it already outside of this reasoning, but it's also a really great way to plug in and really find an indication of what could be wrong with an outlet before you're plugging your RV into it. The only thing about this is the surge protector is going to be a little bit more pricey than these other items that we're discussing, but they are well worth the cost um, and definitely something to make the investment for. The other thing to keep in mind is while it might be a little bit more expensive, you're also going to be possibly saving yourself thousands of dollars worth of damage down the road when it could have protected you from a power outage or a surge or something that could have really messed up your electrical system in your RV. Number three on the list of things to help against RV hot skin is just a simple residential outlet tester. You can plug this in to your RV surge protector and it, you know your RV surge protector has some readings on it as well but it's good to have around the house for your own outlets as well because you could be experiencing internally all these same problems that we were experiencing from the RV pedestal. So it's good to just be plugging in and you can plug it into any sort of adapter and it'll read open neutral, open positive, reverse polarity, all that good stuff. And it'll just give you peace of mind that if your outlets are wired correctly, then you can rest easy knowing that you're not gonna be getting shocked after standing in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't be dealing with any electricity after standing in a puddle, but... Yeah, there's obviously other supplies you can get. As I mentioned, there's other voltage meters that you can actually ground. Keep that in mind when you're testing things with your NCVT. If you are in your RV or you are not grounded, it might not be giving you an accurate reading on things. It's really more for external use, I would say, when you're standing on the ground um, and you're somewhat grounded yourself. That being said, please do more research on the topic. This really is just a general overview of the subject. There's a lot more you could learn and dig into to learn about this topic. And if you're going to be traveling full time or if you're just gonna be a weekend warrior or just go on vacation sometimes in an RV, it's definitely worth looking into to protect yourself and your family. So those are our tips for staying safe when you are experiencing RV hot skin. I think we're going to leave it there for today. Thank you guys for joining us this week. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and we will see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Thanks for traveling with us.